Hello, welcome to part 5 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Let's move to our 21st question. Which of the following home program is most appropriate for a patient with chronic lateral epicondylitis? Option A, using a forearm cuff to increase the loading on the extensor tendon. Option B, performing exercises for wrist strength and stretching. Option C, administrating iodophoresis with dexamethasone and lignocaine. Option D, doing friction massage of the brachioradialis tendon. And the answer is Option B, performing exercises for wrist strength and stretching. Explanation for this question is Lateral epicondylitis is caused by overuse of the wrist extensors that originates on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, especially the extensor carpi radialis brevis. If the lateral epicondylitis is at the chronic stage, conditioning of the extensor muscle and sustained grip activities will be most effective in the long term management. A forearm cuff is though to decrease the muscle loading. Iondophoresis would not be appropriate for home program. Friction massages of the brachioradialis would not be appropriate since the extensor carpi radialis previous muscle is usually the one affected. Now let's move to our 22nd question. A patient has pain, swelling and tenderness over the medial border of the hand. The patient also shows changes in the color and temperature of skin, hyperhidrosis and progressive joint stiffness in the wrist and the hand. The most likely cause of the patient's signs and symptoms is Option A. Cervical disc disease Option B. Renault's phenomena Option C. Complex regional pain syndrome Option D. Carpal tunnel syndrome And the answer is Option C. Complex Regional Pain Syndrome Explanation to this question is All of these symptoms are indicative of reflex sympathetic dystrophy syndrome. Cervical disc disease does not produce swelling in the hand, color and temperature changes or hyperhidrosis. Renal phenomena results in pain, pallor and coolness but not hyperhidrosis. Although carpal tunnel syndrome can also show sympathetic nervous system abnormalities Compression of the median nerve would refer symptoms to the lateral board of the hand, thumb area. With carpal tunnel syndrome, the patient may also display thinner muscle weakness. Now move to our 23rd question. A patient comes to physical therapy with generalized body pain. Which of the following criteria would best provide a physical therapist with discriminating information to distinguish between the presence of fibromyalgia and the presence of other painful condition in the patient? Option A. The existence of the specific tender points. Option B. Loss of sleep over the past 3 months. Option C. A poor response to stretching exercises. Option D. Visual disturbance and loss of balance. And the answer is... Option A. The existence of specific tender points. Explanation to this question is, tender points are the single most powerful way to distinguish the presence of fibromyalgia from other painful conditions in a patient. Non-restorative sleep, no loss of sleep is a typical finding with fibromyalgia. Stretching exercise may be quite beneficial for patients with fibromyalgia. Visual disturbance and loss of balance do not typically occurs in fibromyalgia but may occur in myofascial pain syndrome. Now let's move to our 24th question. A 27 year old patient comes to physical therapy with wrist pain following a fall on the outstretched hand between the tendon of abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis longus. The physical therapist identifies significant tenderness to palpation. The pain is not reproduced with contraction of the surrounding muscles. Which of the following diagnoses is most likely present in the patient? Option A. Extensor carpi radialis tendonitis. Option B. Colis fracture. Option C. Triangular fibrocartilage complex injury. Option D. Scaphoid fracture. And the answer is... Option D. Scaphoid fracture. Explanation to this question is... This injury was from a fall on an outstretched hand and is unlikely to be tendonitis. 
Colis fracture do not present specifically with tenderness in the snuff box. A triangular fibrocartilage complex injury is central or medial, that's on our side, and does not present in the snuff box. The location of the option 4 describes the anatomical snuff box. Tenderness with palpation in the anatomical snuff box suggests a scaphoid fracture, especially from a fall on an outstretched hand injury. Now move to our 25th question. A 44-year-old patient has been referred to clinic after being evaluated at Arthritis Spine Center. The patient has been diagnosed as rheumatoid arthritis rather than osteoarthritis. Which of the following would be exact observed in rheumatoid arthritic patient? Option A. Involvement of proximal interferential joints. Option B. Chronic inflammation. Option C. Involvement of distal interferential joint. Option D. Involvement of the weight-bearing joints. And the answer is... Option A. Involvement of the proximal interferential joints. Explanation to this question is... Rheumatoid arthritis involves proximal interferential joints. It is also noted for acute inflammatory signs and symptoms and is systemic disease. So that's all for today. If you need further clarification, check the description box and give your feedback in the comment box. If you like this MCQ session, do subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thank you.